Caregivers, I think, are a well-kept secret in this country. About almost four years ago, um, Bob had a stroke, and so he needs he needs someone with him, you know, so that if he does go to fall, I could possibly catch him, or that if he does fall and get hurt, uh, there's someone to, you know, to call 911. At various times in my life, I've been the caregiver for my 94-year-old aunt and my 85-year-old mother. I take care of my mom, who is Joan Shatney. She's 84. And um, about four years ago, she started to show significant signs of dementia. In January 2007, I had a stroke. My primary uh, caregiver is my husband, Walter. Helene has been a very good patient. She's a great gal, and she does not complain. As long as I can, as long as the kids and I can keep her home, we want to keep her home. And no one else could ever be so beautiful to me. I see the most beautiful This program is designed to support caregivers at home. We're seeing more and more people that are uh, taking care of their loved ones at home, their husbands, their aunts, their mothers. The Caregiver Connections Project really is about bringing community together to understand what the needs are of our caregivers. Um, it's a very complex issue. Many people don't want to um, even ask for help. They don't know who to ask. Uh, they don't know who is trained, what kinds of opportunities are even out there. So our mission really is to educate uh, the caregivers as well as volunteers in the community to be able to go out and assist these folks. It's an interesting project because for the first time we've looked at combining services throughout what we call as the western part of the state of New Hampshire. Uh, it um, utilizes the county of Coos, which is about one-third in land area of the state, Grafton County, Cheshire County, and uh, Sullivan counties. Uh, one of the things that's common, of course, the economic situation in all four counties has been uh, rather devastating. And we're seeing a lot of frail elderly that are basically being left behind and having to fend for themselves. She needs to be prompted for everything. Okay, Mom, pick up your fork. Uh, take a bite. Um, I, I, you know, are you done? Um, and she doesn't know. She doesn't. She. Well, I think I am. You know, I say, are you still hungry? I don't know. I don't think I am. And I just sort of keep track of how much she eats, so to, so she can maintain her weight. You're everything I never thought I'd find. You are beautiful to me. Anything in this reality. Twice a week we go up to physical therapy. He's getting a tune-up to try to build him up a little stronger, bring him up a little higher. It's, it's important to have her comfortable, and that's the most important that she's taken care of. Put him in the pool every day, bring him down. It's all very involved because he wears a brace on his leg, and I'm down on my hands and knees so many times a day to dress or undress. She, being a nurse, gave me a lot of tips too, so. You know, it's, a, it's working together, that's really what it's all about. You can't do it by yourself. I need the outside help and I need her help. You have to know, Helene, that my mother was 42 when she died and she left six children. And Helene was the oldest. The baby was two months old. So Helene took over as our mother. So she's pretty special, not just to me, but to all of us, you know. She means everything to us. She stood by my dad um, right to the end, and I admire her for that. It's been rewarding.
for me, you know, to be able to take care of Helene. I work with a gentleman who, uh, his wife came down with Alzheimer's. And some of the guys are talking to him and says, it's time, you know, you should put her in the nursing home and get on with your life. And I never forgot that. He looked at them and he says, it's what I signed up for. When you get married and say, I do, you should be saying in, in your mind, I will. I thought about that a lot. Will I be, end up taking care of Bob? like my mother did my father. And as it turns out, yes. And was I willing to do that? Yes. My wife bought a little book uh, for the kids when they were going to be taking their tonsils out. And the nurse was Nancy. So she christened me Nancy. And I have a, an honorary cap for nursing that one of the LNAs this is McDermott made for me. It's a paper, but it looks just like a nurse. The person that raised me was uh, self-assured, very active, out in the community doing things, uh, paralegal. And I guess the hardest thing is, is that I'm taking care of somebody I don't know. Just about absolutely everything that he used to be able to do for himself, I do. Seems like lately, every week, there's another decline and things that were okay last week are not okay this week. I have a bad back from an airplane crash I was in about 30 years ago, and so I can't do a lot of bending over or lifting. Some folks are still working and trying to be a caregiver. Some folks have left their jobs or are, are at home full time, and they find that they are more and more isolated. And many times in our rural communities here in New Hampshire, they, they don't know where to turn to get the help that they might need or even know if there is help. So it's really important that we do the reaching out into the communities uh, and, and find ways to support them. There's no one else to go and, and refill his prescriptions, you know, and to go do this and go do that, all the errands, the groceries, the, you know, go get gas, go to the post office. You know, we live from check to check, Social Security check to check. And we have to pay for someone to come and do the lawn. It's a huge lawn. And I can't ride, because of my back injuries, I can't ride the riding lawnmower, otherwise I would do it myself. Shoveling in the winter, we have to have people come and plow. You know, there's just so much that we, we have to pay for. I have uh, my studies to do because I'm in college again, because I lost my job. Plus I have a campground to run. Plus I have a husband <laughs> who has needs too. I think the thing that I hear from most people is time. Because they don't have any time for themselves and they seem to forget who they are. You can't do it 24-7, you can't. You start to feel like you're not essential anymore, that you don't have a life. As much as we love each other, you need to break from whomever you know, you're taking care of. I'm finding it really hard to do it. I can't do it anymore. It's hurting me physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Be still and know. Be still and know. Be still. We need respite up here, and it needs to be affordable, and it, and, and it needs to be um, accessible. That's what we need. One of the persons who have been very helpful is Fran Olson out of the uh, Bristol office. She and another lady had a uh, tools of the caretaker, powerful tools, and that was very helpful. It, it gives you a perspective that I didn't have before. 
that's the thing that always sticks in my mind is that once they apply for the program, it's that sense of relief. And then how do we find it? Well, our kids all have computers and they went in, they searched a lot of stuff. You can pick up the phone and get information. They're very helpful. And the equipment, they've been very helpful to get the right stuff in, you know? And uh, that's what we need. We need information. We have a neighbor that helps us out immensely. The guy's 78 years old. He walks across the street and he, he, he stacked seven quarter wood for two years in a row for us. That fellow, when he does come over two, three times a week, he takes my garbage down, throws it in the dumpster. I like to come over and uh, visit with her since she has a, a problem and can't get out to see me. I come to see her. We sit and play boggle or some other, and mostly we chat. <laughs> we, we can chat about nothing for hours and hours, you know, but that's, uh, we've always done that. <laughs> when I can, I go fishing. That's what I do. I read books, and I get some periodicals that I have to read, and I don't have to, but I do, you know, that I'm interested in. I sit on a rock, a big boulder out in the middle of a the water. And I take the puppy for a walk. And that's when I pray and I just refresh. I do um, volunteer at another seniors program until I find work two days a week. If I can bring her, I do. Somebody has to be there to take care of her while I go uh, teach water aerobics. If nobody volunteers to sit with her, um, then she can't go. Right now, some of the exciting things that are happening with Caregiver Connections is um, small groups of people have been coming together to, to work on a plan to help in their own community. We are uh, engaging the faith-based community, our community partners, um, folks that are, are in um, community housing, as well as individuals who would like to do something to help but they're not quite sure what it is that they can do. Bob has said to me, I feel like a burden. And you know, it kind of breaks my heart when he says that because he's, he's not a burden. And he's got to get that in his head. It's like, <laughs> you know. She's my wife. And that's it. I'll do it. I know she'd do it for me. That's all. You get set in your ways and then you mix in a little pride with that. And it's very hard to say, I need help. You know, but we do. We need it desperately. Any caregiver does. <laughs>